Hey everybody, welcome to the Infinite Regression. Hey, uh, this is gonna be ridiculous. Um, so I, I already finished playing this game and reviewing it and whatnot, and it is bad. It is not good. Um, the game is Tesla breaks the world. It was already decided by the spinning wheel. You know, decided that this was the game. Um, I played it. I did not enjoy it. And, um, yeah. So, what happened was the video kept recording <laughs> the entire time. So, like, while I was creating the final score and everything, while I was listening to definitely music that will, uh, get me content matched and whatnot, like, um, and then just, you know, mindlessly surfing around while I'm just thinking about what I'm going to say about this god-awful game. Um, yeah, so I can't upload that as video with all the extra content of, like, me just dinking around on my computer. Uh, so we're going to... I'm just going to show you briefly. First of all, <laughs> epilepsy. I, I wanted to like this game. I'm telling you, I wanted to like this game. Uh, you know, Tesla Breaks the World. Interesting uh, title, interesting concept. Let's do continue, see if that'll pick us up. Anyway, so, like, yeah, is not good. Um, you know, th there's a quirky narrator. Uh, there's zombies who are out to kill you. Yeah, more zombies. I just gotta keep running. Got, gotta pick up the power pellets. Waka, waka, waka. Oh, God. That's right. That's not how you do that. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway. Oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, the smarmy narrator keeps going the whole time and it's that charming like it is there we go Pata. Yeah, so the this level seems designed differently than it was last time that I played it. Is this like... No, I guess it's not different. I zapped it. Zombie's gonna come up. I hit a checkpoint. How do I know that that was a checkpoint? <laughs> um, anyway, the controls are awkward as all get out. Yeah, sure, Thomas Edison would have done a way better job. Okay. Yeah, the poor craftsmanship. Ha 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 ha. Oh, God. Uh, anyway... Like, the controls are wonk as wonk gets, and, um, it's really, at no point do you feel yourself thinking, like, hey, I am having fun. <laughs> oh, God. You often can't see what's ahead of you, and, like, sure, let's try again. Because everything that you can stand on is black, you know? Um... Yeah, I guess it is slightly different. I have no idea what those golf balls do. No idea whatsoever. So, yeah, let's find the 
Microtransmitter. Okay. Yeah, and you get a little tired of the, like, slide whistle every time you jump thing. Yeah, it is different. Okay, so... Yeah, for some reason this is procedurally generated. Like, which I can't figure because, um... It's not good. <laughs> like, it never has the feel of, like, oh, well this is... Well designed. Which sometimes you get from procedural generation. You just get. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that was a cheap death. That was a super cheap death. You you gotta you gotta recognize how cheap that death was. Oh my god. I have to again. Ugh. But yeah, all the colorful stuff you don't jump on and all of the like black stuff you do, except for the tangly black stuff. And it's really, really, um, yeah. Okay. The magnifying transmitter appears to be causing some sort of reaction since the blast at your laboratory. The more that you use the device, the more likely zombies will spawn. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like it's using chunks because I'm recognizing a lot of... Wait... A lot of these chunks. Anyway, it's so very tedious. Um, and it's sad because I really, really wanted to enjoy this game. But it's not, not good. It's not good. It's not fun. The controls are super wonk. Like, you, you get these uh, moving pla- Oh, God, I didn't even see that zombie. Anyway, ugh. Yeah, the foreground background is, like, continually problematic. Because you have no idea where anything is or what- Okay, yeah, you see, like that. So it's procedurally generated. But you're just jumping blindly into everything you do. Well, this is just my opinion, but I think Edison would have done better with it. Yeah, we got it. Anyway. Okay. <sighs> okay. Is there any... <sighs> Sweet. I did it. I got a one-up. See, that zombie came out of nowhere. Okay, zapped him. Really? That... Okay. Yeah, is. It's just infuriating. Um, 
Because you you get the feeling with this... Yes, I wanted to exit. You get the feeling with this game that it could have been something, but it's not. Uh, I just want to know how much they charge for this thing. Ten dollars. Ugh. Not worth it. Not worth it. Oh, mostly negative. Um... I do not recommend this game. Uh, monthly. Post that. Okay. Um, yeah. Mostly negative for a reason. Sorry, dude. Like, you made a game that's not at all fun. <laughs> like, it has an interesting art style at first. You're like, oh, okay. But as soon as I started playing with it, I, I playing it, I, I, I tried to jump on all the foreground and background stuff because that looked like what the real platforms were. And all of the actual platforms didn't look like they were what the world was made of. And um, then I couldn't get simple game mechanics to work, um, you know, even though I was doing basically exactly what they told me to do. It, it was just problematic the entire way through. And at no point did I find myself having fun with Tesla Breaks the World. So I'm sorry, Tesla. We're going to uninstall your little game here and we are going to hide it like we do with the bad games because here's my final score for Tesla Breaks the World. Two out of a possible seven Jacob's Ladders. That too is mostly because the art style is at least interesting. Um, and Jacob's Ladders because you make them with a Tesla coil. So inside this box is going to be a transformer and a Tesla coil Transformer powers the Tesla coil, so you run the positive and negative from the transformer to the positive and negative on the Tesla coil, run the positive and negative from the Tesla coil to the positive and negative on these terminal blocks, which go to a positive and a negative wire. Uh, looks like they use bent coat hanger, which is totally doable, and this makes that bzz, bzz, you know, thing that you see in the background whenever there's a mad scientist. Anyway, make it with a Tesla coil. Um, <laughs> and you make a Tesla coil literally by just winding copper wire. You could just, you can make one. <laughs> I, a, a friend of mine made one and I provided the transformer and we hooked it up to his little brother's door, bedroom door, and plugged it in, and then we exited through the window, and then when his brother went to open the door to his bedroom, he could not do so because he was being electrocuted. <laughs> but, like, not massively electrocuted. He didn't die or anything. But but it was, you know, it was a stun gun out of a doorknob. <laughs> we, we turned his doorknob into a stun gun. And it was very funny. And uh, we all have a chuckle about it now. At the time, he was not happy at all that we had Tesla coiled his doorknob. Anyway, uh, yeah, instead of playing this game... Wrap some copper wire around a, a piece of, like, we used a piece of PVC. Uh, wrap some copper wire around some PVC a whole bunch of times. You're going to need a whole bunch. You're going to need to coil that coil. You're going to need to coil it tight, uh, uniformly, um, and a whole bunch of times. It's going to take a little bit of time. But once you get that bad boy coiled up, then um, you can uh, hook it up to a transformer. You've got extra transformers lying around. Don't act like you don't. And uh, 
plug that bad boy in, hook it up to something metal, and shock the crap out of people with it. Or make a Jacob's Ladder, I guess, would be a more responsible thing to do. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, Tesla coils are way more fun than Tesla Breaks the World, itself being a completely broken game. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.